Can I call now my friend Luc Lallemand? Everybody knows uh, Luc. Luc, you will speak with two caps, one as CEO of Infrabel. And in this respect, I think you have very successful experience of ERTMS implementation. And the other one is as the vice chair of the uh, EIM, European Infrastructure Manager Association. Thank you, Luc. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Pierre. Dear Minister, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Marcel Verslip said uh, earlier, the first priority is implementation. Well, I would like to give you some uh, testimony concerning the Belgian case of implementing uh, ERTMS and uh, ETCS. And I would like, uh, during this uh, short presentation, to answer three questions. The first one is, how is ERTMS supporting the main strategy or the main strategic priorities of the company Infrabel as an infrastructure manager? The second question is, how do we realize that on the timeline and trying to avoid any delay? And the third one is, how is our ERTMS strategy structured between versions and uh, equipment? Well, in, in Belgium, ERTMS uh, become, became a priority after an important accident uh, that has happened in 2010. And um, at that time, we were not really aware that ERTMS is supporting every strategic priority of the company. What is, this, uh, what is uh, the strategy of the company? Well, in times where uh, funding and especially uh, public fine, uh, funding uh, is becoming difficult, you have to focus your, priori your priorities on the essential. So we choose for the essential, and that is safety as first priority, punctuality, the second one, Capacity, developing new capacities, new projects. That is the third one. And then a break-even company. And that remain overall in Europe and in the world, I think, a very big challenge in the railway sector to uh, respect at least the break-even. And then the last one is being in line with uh, the society. Well, when you have a look on ERTMS and the implementation of ERTMS in Belgium, you are improving substantially the safety. You improve also substantially the punctuality with it. You improve the capacity because it's possible with the level 2 version of ERTMS to uh, realize a reduction of the block time between the trains. So it is possible to operate more trains on the same uh, infrastructure. Concerning uh, the financial figures, I hear here and there that uh, it's very expensive. It's an expensive project, but at the same time, you make the full renewal of the whole signaling system and you make it compatible with the rest of Europe and even, uh, even more. So, as you see, it is a, an important industrial project in Belgium, but fully in line with all these uh, priorities. Then, if we have a short look on uh, the timeline of ETCS deployment in Belgium, well, let's begin by the beginning. Ten years ago, uh, in Belgium, there was no uh, ATP system, and we began uh, to deploy a, a national a protection uh, train control system named TBL1+. Plus. But a specificity of that system is that the beacons that are used, the balises, that these balises are fully European ETCS ERTMS conform. So we are deploying that now, and the target for the full realization of ERTMS in Belgium is 2022 and the good news is that we are, as we speak, on schedule. Then we could go to a further uh, step in 2025, where it will be only possible uh, for trains to uh, use the Belgian rail in, uh, in Belgium, uh, only possible to use the, these rails with uh, ETCS uh, ERTMS. 
Um, trying to uh, answer the third question, what is the structure of the program? Well, as we started it a few years ago, we decided to work on the existing and approved version. And we developed, in fact, three pillars uh, in, the, in the strategy. The first one is to equip the existing project with uh, ETCS version 1, the version 230D. Then to use the ETCS level 2 with the same version for the core network, about 40% of uh, the Belgian network. And then pillar 3 consists of using the uh, limited supervision functionalities of the baseline tree. That is our pillar number three, and that is the reason why we are so motivated to work with the Commission and with the ERA in order to have an approved baseline tree as soon as possible and uh, as promised. Now, I would like to show you uh, this slide, maybe a little bit complex, but the, the message uh, uh, of this slide is that you don't need to buy a Rolls-Royce when you just need a good car. We made a choice, and you see that on the two uh, orange uh, lines on the, uh, on the slide, we made the choice to limit the equipment of level two to the core network. We had a first option where we limited the global risk to 8.5%, and the investment price of that scenario was about 4.6 billion euro. We decided to take a little bit more risk, almost neglectable, 9.6%, by choosing to equip 60% of the, the second, secondary network to equip it with um, the limited uh, supervision uh, functionalities. And by that choice, you can reduce the project by 2.6 billion euro, and we have now uh, a budget, a stabilized budget to realize the full uh, master plan ETCS in Belgium for uh, a budget of two, uh, 2 billion euro. So now I would like to uh, finish the presentation addressing some, um, some messages to uh, partners. Um, the first one, but I think that every speaker uh, is saying that it is uh, essential to have a very strong commitment from all stakeholders to realize that. The second uh, message uh, concerning uh, European colleagues is that we absolutely need a system stability in the ETCS specification. And the, the first message is please try to respect uh, the deadline in the timely development of baseline tree. There was a huge progress uh, signing the MOU in Copenhagen two, two years ago. But now we have to conclude that and guarantee the permanent ascending and descending compatibility between versions and between board and track. And then last but not least, we have also to solve some uh, remaining problems concerning uh, GSMR issues as interference caused by intrusion and the development of uh, ETCS over GRPRS. In conclusion, I would like to say near uh, all the technical problems and uh, challenges that we have, ERTMS is also a question of leadership. You have to, uh, to believe in that, and I think that leadership, the, the, the leadership needed to develop ERTMS overall in Europe in the, and in the world is ambition, commitment, and decisiveness. Thank you very much for your attention. Luc, thank you very much for this very topical contribution to this conference. Thanks a lot.